Well, Hunter Biden somehow got a corporate board seat uh, on a Ukrainian energy company. Why? Well, it seems obvious the purpose would be influencing his father, who was vice president at the time and whose portfolio included Ukraine. Now, Joe Biden, to the extent he's been asked about it, not very often, the press is deeply incurious, but to the extent he has been, he says, well, it wasn't a corrupt arrangement because he never spoke to Hunter Biden about the arrangement. And yet, as we reported last night on this show, there is photographic evidence of Biden on a golf outing with both his son, Hunter, and a man called Devin Archer, who was another member of the Burisma board. What does this add up to? Doug McGregor has deep knowledge of Ukraine. He's a former U.S. Army colonel and author of the book Margin of Victory. He joins us tonight. So, Doug, thanks so much for coming on. So you're familiar with the region and you're familiar with Washington. Yes. What do you think was going on here? Well, I think we know now. And in fact, for your information, uh, Novaya Gazeta in Moscow has now just recently published an article backed up by documents that go into far greater detail than we can here. Uh, but the bottom line is that the oligarch who was responsible for appointing uh, Mr. Biden to the board and his friend uh, Archer Devon. It seems that he was banned from traveling to the United States. And then magically, after the appointment to the board occurred, suddenly the ban on this man's travel to the United States was lifted. And his suspected criminal activities and shady business practices were suddenly ignored. So if you're looking for quid pro quo, it's pretty hard to argue that there wasn't a quid pro quo, at least on that level. That is that is absolutely remarkable and checkable. Yes, by the way. absolutely, absolutely. And to this, you've got to add a whole range of other things: billions of dollars over many years in Ukraine disappearing into private banks, one owned by this particular oligarch, and five five billion, four billion. We're not really sure. May have been lost of that. At least three or four billion came out of the IMF that was supposed to jumpstart the Ukrainian economy. So the, the whole problem with the corruption in Ukraine is pervasive. Ukraine is not a rich country. Oh, no, not at all. It's, it's terribly poor. It's probably the poorest country in Europe at this point. It's certainly below Russia in terms of per capita uh, GD, GNP, which Russia is at 68. Ukraine is far below that. Things are not getting better. But the best barometer of what's wrong in Ukraine is the youth. They've, they've suffered an enormous exodus of human capital out of the country. Millions have left. And these are the people with the education, with the ability to leave and get jobs. There are an estimated 2 million in Poland. And they recently polled the 1.5 million that are legal, at least in small numbers. And the top reason for leaving is corruption in Ukraine. And a third of them have said they'll never go home because they think corruption is hopeless. It can't be eradicated. So politically connected Americans who are getting rich from their connections in Ukraine are really exploiting the sure. poorest nation in Europe and its people for money. This is where the swamp has consequences overseas as well as here at home. Somebody like Hunter Biden is literally stealing from the Ukrainian people. That's what's really tragic about this. And it doesn't stop with him. We could spend a lot of time talking about many politicians who've been involved in one way or another. But a good example is this recent military aid package. We're providing $400 million in aid. Sounds like a great idea. Until you, unless you're a Ukrainian in the military and you look at this and you see that most of the equipment that you're supposed to buy is coming from the United States, and much of it is not what you need. Much of it is not terribly useful to you. You would rather buy other things based on your experience, things that you can use immediately. So who's getting, who's benefiting from this $400 million aid package? We've got to go to the Senate. Look at the senators who sponsored it, the people in the House who sponsored it. Look at the U.S. defense industries. So it's, it's kind of a recycling of American money, but it's not necessarily going to profoundly benefit the Ukrainian military establishment. That is, the, the deeper you dig, the sleazier everything that happens in the city becomes. We'll put that picture on the screen one more time. We, we heard this last night. We asked the Biden campaign for comment on it. Um, and of course, they haven't uh, responded at all. Doug McGregor, thank you for that perspective. Fascinating. Thanks.